I was doing security for the uh, city commissioners meeting and during the middle of the meeting I had a lady approach me and advise me there was a lady having some chest pains um, and that she needed some help so I ran over to her and began asking her um, do you have any medical history any heart problems diabetes trying to figure out what may be causing her distress um, and in the middle of me talking to her she actually went into cardiac arrest um, and uh, Butts County firemen and I got her down to the ground. We checked for a pulse. Unfortunately, she had no pulse at that time and had stopped breathing on her own. So we began chest compressions at that time. I initiated chest compressions. Um, we were able to get an AED. Jessica actually ran and got us the AED and we got her hooked up to that. Um, we continued chest compressions until fire was able to get on scene. They took over compressions briefly and um, we waited for fire and their other fire team and for EMS to get on scene that way they could take over patient care. Um, I initiated chest compressions again and we were actually able to get her pulse back without having the shocker. Um, by the time EMS actually got there and um, began taking over care, she had begun to breathe on her own and had a strong pulse. Once they got her onto the stretcher, she actually started to come around and was actually alert. We got her into the back of the ambulance and she was already talking by the time we were able to get her in the back of the ambulance. Um, after all of the, the chaos and everything sort of died down at the meeting, I was actually able to go and visit with her at the hospital. By the time I got to the hospital, she was actually alert and oriented and talking. So once I got into the room, it was actually really cool. She, she kept looking at me as though she, she was confused, like she knew me, but she wasn't quite sure why she knew me. And um, she looked over at me and said, were you the lady that was talking to me? I said, yes, ma'am, I was. She said, well, I bet you didn't think we'd end up here. <laughs> and um, she actually, uh, they took over care for her. And whenever I left her, she was alert and oriented and was still obviously making jokes, which was fantastic. After Miss O'Neill actually was in the hospital, um, she did stay on a ventilator for a couple weeks. Um, and during that time, Miss Bohannon and her family, uh, we, they actually put me in a group text. That way I could hear about her treatments and how she was, how she was dealing with everything. Um, we'd get daily updates, usually twice a day, to see whether or not they were able to wean her off of it, a ventilator. And she started to do really well. Um, after a couple days of back and forth with the ventilator, she was able to come off of it. Her family um, was able to actually speak with her and spend some time with her. Unfortunately, she did pass away. Um, but, oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna cry, wait. <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking with Miss Bohannon, <clears throat> After speaking with Miss Bohannon and Miss O'Neill's children, um, they expressed to me their gratitude. <sighs> That's a lot tougher to talk about than I thought it would be. <clears throat> they were able to express their gratitude to me that they had that time to talk to their mom. And um, <clears throat> that means a lot to me. Um, I've been an EMT for six years, and you know I've had countless people that I've actually able to see, you know, come back to life. But it's it's completely different in this uniform. And um, having them express their gratitude to me is something that I will forever be grateful for. And I did not think this would be that hard to talk about. <sighs> <clears throat> but they were very grateful um, and very thankful for me um, being there that night. Um, and not very many people know that I actually wasn't supposed to be there that night. It was another officer and I offered to step in and go work security for her. And um, it was just by happenstance that I happened to be there that night. And it's, it's, it's a, something that I will, I will never forget. And I'm grateful that I got to to be a part of that and work with um, 
our fire departments um, and EMS as a law enforcement officer and able to give them that time with their friend and their family member. So I was actually shocked to hear that I got the strongest link in the chain. I was not expecting that, um, but I'm very grateful. I was advised that quite a few people put me in for that honor. Um, and honestly, I really am honored to receive that. Um, at the end of the day, we show up to do our jobs. You know, we never expect to be able to, to make such a big impact on somebody like that. It's not something that happens every day. Um, but I can assure you, I am very honored to have received the strongest link in the chain and I can guarantee it'll, it will help drive me every day to be better.